Alrighty. OBS setup part one redo. I'm going to do it the right way this time. First thing you need to do is go to a browser, type in OBS Studio. Uh, when that comes up, uh, what you want is this right here Open Broadcaster Software OBS. Go ahead and click on download. And this will take you to the download page and download the uh, download installer or download zip. And you should be off and running. Go ahead and install it. And once it's installed, we'll get right to the meat and potatoes. Okay, once it opens, you will see OBS. I'm going to start from a clean slate and this should work well. So the first thing you want to do, uh, of course, uh, you can't, this will work as a recorder as well, but if you're going to live stream, which is I'm going to show you how to do that as well, you will need a subscription to an account on your favorite streaming service, be it YouTube, Twitch, any of the live streaming service, whatever you want to use. Uh, they're all, they all work uh, very similarly the same. So once your account is set up, uh, what you want to do is you want to go to settings and we'll just go through some of these settings here the only thing i change is automatic check for updates on startup i don't care about the updates i i'm a control freak that's it for general i don't change anything there go to stream um if you're on youtube or whatever you are this is where you ch you choose your streaming service or obs okay mine is youtube RTMPS. I use primary YouTube ingest server. You can choose to connect your account or you can use a stream key. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you how to set that up. All right. So let me get over to, let me get my browser up. So in your account, whatever streaming service you're using, you're going to want two bookmarks you want your live dashboard and I'm going to just talk about YouTube see if you can find your live dashboard and bookmark that and also your live streaming dashboard all right so from live dashboard you can click on this and this will open and this is used for going live instantaneously with no notifications no scheduling so this will pop up. So what you can do is you can edit, click edit, and you can edit the title and edit all the other things, whether you, whether you want to monetize, blah, 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 all that stuff. Now, this is where you acquire your stream key. You'll see your stream key right here. So what you want to do is you want to copy that. Okay, just hit copy, and it's going to copy it to the clipboard. And then you come down here. It says, use stream key advanced. I leave this box unchecked always. Okay. And what you want to do is you want to double click on this and click right click and paste your stream key in. hit apply. Boom. You're done. All right. That covers the streaming. And then all you have to do is come down here and hit start streaming and your stream will be pushed to your streaming service. That's how that's done. Very easy, simple, but make sure you get the bookmark bookmark. So you don't have to stumble through, you know, trying to locate it every time you want to stream. It, it's helpful to put the book, bookmarks in. Moving on to output. Go to output. I have output mode simple. Uh, I do not touch any of this. All right. Uh, 2,500 kilobits per second. Software is X264. Audio bit rate 160. I leave all this, all this alone. For the recording, let's say you're going to record a video and then you're going to push it up to YouTube. You're going to upload it. Uh, you need to set your recording path. I can't remember what the default is but I have a whole separate drive set up for recordings. So when you hit this button right here, down in the bottom right hand corner, start recording, it will push that video to that directory. And then you go and you just drag that video from the directory right into your streaming service in your upload area, All right? Audio, uh, 48 kilohertz, uh, make sure your sample rates, uh, don't hold me to this, I believe the bit rate Sample rate uh, should be, should not bit rate, sample rate um, should be 48 kilohertz. Uh, but if you're using like different audio tools and all that other stuff, then you're going to want to make sure all the bit rates are the same. Nothing good will come of it if your audio is running on 44.1 and 
OBS is running at 48. Okay, down here, desktop audio. This is where you select. So let's say, uh, and this is this is really geared towards ham radio operators who are running, who want to bring audio in for the radio, which is from the radio, which I would recommend doing that direct. Keep it all in the virtual realm. Don't use a microphone to grab audio from your rig, an ambient room microphone. Doesn't sound good. It's terrible. Um, this is the way to do this. So you set your desktop audio up. I'm assuming you have a basic knowledge of sound card operation. I'm not going to get into that here. I have a primary station card, which plays back the audio from uh, my radios. If you have a USB cable on your radio that's plugged in, you can always use an audio is passed through that cable from your rig, be it a super hat or a kind of a glorified super hat like a 7300, anything uses a USB audio codec. In other words, it passes audio in and out of the radio. You can use that audio. I use an SDR dongle on the front end of the 7300. So I run SDR console. So I have SDR console set to play the audio from the pan adapter from the dongle through my system using the state primary station card. So if you're using real tech speakers, you can use that. Uh, whatever you want to use, but this is your desktop audio. This will also feed audio from videos, uh, MP3 audio recordings, anything that plays through that primary card and you want to pipe it to the stream, this is where you do it from. So I set this to M Audio Air, which is my primary station card. Now, if you're using a separate microphone, I would recommend doing this, even if you don't do it how I do it, which I bring an I bring audio from the digital audio workstation into my stream, which is also sending audio to all of my HF rigs. All right, so uh, if you don't have a microphone or the ability to do that, which is this not a problem, I would get yourself a decent USB microphone and place it on a little stand right on the desk, so you have good audio speaking speaking audio. Uh, into the stream worth it not expensive pretty much go with anything decent and it'll get you some decent audio going in don't use the audio on the webcams <laughs> they sound like crap uh, you may be able to do it if the webcam is close enough to your face but mm, most webcams I wouldn't run them that close to your face uh, you look like uh, Mr. Potato Head or something so um, and we'll get into some other options regarding audio later on in this video so mic auxiliary audio, I have this set to capture my mic audio post-processing from the DAW in from the M audio card. So I will set that here and the rest I leave alone. On to video. Base canvas res resolution. This is the resolution that OBS is running on on the computer. I have 1920 by 1080 in the scaled resolution, 1280 by 720. Seems to be very happy going into YouTube. Frames per second, 30. That's where I have it. Bicubic, sharpened scale, 16 samples. I don't believe I have touched this ever. I just leave it alone. Uh, Hotkeys we'll get into later. That, that comes into play in the second video in this series using Advanced Scene Switcher. Uh, advanced, don't touch anything here. The only thing I touch is the process priority. So that's going to depend on how good your computer is. So if your computer is really good um, and robust, uh, you can set the process, the process priority to high. Uh, you could leave it, oh, I don't know, normal. I don't know what it's set to by default. Normal, maybe something like that. You may have to play with that if you have problems, if you're running on an older computer. OBS is pretty passive, so you shouldn't have any issues there. All right, moving on. Of course, uh, any changes you make, hit apply and OK. It will close that window. I'm not going to do that because my settings are already set. So first thing you want to do, go to scene collection up here, click new and type in, let's say, whatever you want to name it. So I'm going to type the, I'm going to put in um, uh, HF stream. You can put in any, any name you want. Click OK. Now will create a new scene for you, uh, a new uh, profile setup, complete setup. Okay, so now we're over to scenes, and I'm going to run through this. This is basic OBS. This is to get you up and running. And I will go into a few little details of enhancement. To make 
Okay, uh, so we're on scenes. Uh, what you want to do, bottom left-hand corner, go to scene, and you want to click add. Okay, title the scene. So each, you have scenes and sources. Uh, you want a scene based on whatever device you're going to be presenting in OBS. It could be a desktop display, could be a webcam, whatever. Could be an image, could be a video, but remember your scenes have to be independent of all the other scenes. You have to create a scene for each individual thing you're going to use and present you want visible in OBS. So scene, let's do, I'm gonna choose a desktop display. So I'm going to do pan adapter. Pan adapter. So go ahead and click OK. Now we have to choose a source. So in the, you have two tabs here, audio mixer and sources. All right. So source, what you want is whatever, and you can't name the source the same thing as the scene. So... I'm going to name it, but I would associate it. So in this case, I'm going to want display capture because I'm going to capture one of my displays. So I'll click on this and create new and name this. So I'm going to call this um, display three. Even though it's not three, it's going to be a different display. But to my eye, my displays move left to right. So you can name it whatever you want, whatever you're going to present whatever display you're going to use uh, associate that. So actually I'm going to change the name of that. So I'm going to go spectrum. So it's associated with pan adapter, right? So click OK. And now we need to choose the display. So let's go to this one. And there we go. OK. We got the pan adapter on. Now if it pops up too big or too small you can grab one of these top right corners and make adjust that to fit you can also put multiple sources in i'll show you how to do that um so let's do one with a webcam so let's go back to sources and we're going to choose i have three webcams here so i'm going to choose oh let's say of uh, a uh, desk so I have a webcam which shows the station, just the desk part, the, the hardware part, right? So I'll click OK. Now I got to choose a source, right? Associate a source with it. So if it's a webcam, you're going to want video capture device. So this is going to be new and I'm going to put hardware. Click OK. And there's my webcam. So you'll see three webcams in here but it just happened to pop up on the correct webcam. So you, you'll have to cycle through these webcams to see which is the correct webcam if you're running more than one. All right, so once that's done, click OK. Grab this, drag it out full screen, if that's what you're gonna do. Now, turn this a little bit. So, now from this point, uh, what you want to do is I'll show you how to layer right now. Let's say I want to put this image onto the pan adapter, right? Onto this. So what you can do is you can add another source to an existing scene. And it, it, so this has one source, which is the desktop. Now I want to add that camera. So this is so it's already in there. So I'm going to hit add existing. So this is already in there. See how it appeared and add existing. So I'll add that. Click OK. And I can resize this. And move it anywhere I want. So that's a way to composite um, a background. All right. So. Adjustment here. Didn't bother to do that. All righty. Now you'll notice we don't have any audio in here. We need to do that. So go back to settings, go to audio, 
we need to set the desktop audio to, I'm going to set that to speakers, M Audio Air, and I'm going to set the microphone to pick up my microphone audio. Hit apply. And you will notice that this pops into the window and the audio is insanely hot. So we can back this down. Uh, hardware, I'm going to go ahead and hide this. Okay. So I have desktop audio. And by the way, that was a right click. You can right click on a lot of things in here and it gives you the same options as if you're, um, to, you know, um, going through menus, looking for a menu. So desktop audio. So we can come up here to the top of the pan, pan adapter. I'll disengage the audio. And you'll notice the audio is now playing in OBS. See this right here? That's what you want. So, okay, I'm going to mute. Mute these two. So now we have audio. So here's one thing I wanted to show you. So on your microphone, let's say you need to modify, edit your, or if, place an effect on your microphone. You can click this little wheel icon right here or right click on the meter. So you can click this little gear icon and you can go to filters. Well, first of all, let me show you advanced audio properties. This is important. So if you go to advanced Oper audio properties, you can select mono. So if you're only getting audio through one side of the meter, you can select mono, check the mono box. And let's say you don't, you can't get enough audio in to get the meter to deflect up into the red, which is you want it up in here. So it's, it's fairly strong. You don't want to clip and hit zero dB. Uh, you can increase, excuse me, increase the gain right here. And, uh, you just uh, left click, hold and drag, and then you can place a new value in here. So let's say you need to boost the audio by five or 10 dB, you can do it that way. So that's how, that's how that works. That's all I'm gonna show you there. Uh, oh, I, I should show you one more thing. I'm sorry, uh, advanced audio properties. If you, if you, for some reason, and it's very common, you'll see that the audio is not synced with the video. Well, you can offset the audio in this window right here on your microphone. So you can highlight this and change this sooner or later to sync up with your, your physical movement of your mouth. So you can bring the audio in sync uh, with your video. Uh, just a little sideshow there. All right. Now you can go, you can go to filters and I got to move quickly because I got about eight minutes left. So you go to, uh, go to filters, click that gear icon, click filters. Now, if you have plugins installed, which you can, you can install plugins without a DAW. Um, OBS will use those plugins. So let's say you want to add an EQ to your audio. So you can hit the plus sign. And if you have your plugins installed, you can go to like my folders, VST, and you can find information online on how to install plugins. It's also on my website. Um, which will be linked in the description. So VST two plugins, I select that. I go ahead and leave that alone and it will open a v the VS2 plugin selection dropdown. So let's say I want to do some EQ. So here's the RE RIA EQ standalone. So I can select that. Once that's selected, open plugin interface and you can go in and you can EQ your audio. Um, and you can kind of balance it out. Oftentimes, like in a situation where I'm running the 7300, the audio is not what I want going to OBS uh, based upon what I'm putting through to the through the radio. And you can correct that. You can also add compression limiting and all that other those other goodies. Um, that is pretty much it in a nutshell. Of course, to initiate streaming, remember you start streaming. You have to set up your get your stream key in there in, in settings here, and to start recording, make sure your directory is set up and you're good to go. You can also change the scene transitions. So I've got about 25 seconds left. So I'll see you guys later. Hope that helps. Get off and running. Uh, get on there and share your experiences, uh, what you're doing in radio. 7-3, we'll catch you soon.